Hi everybody, it's Julie Ebersol for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I am going to be sharing a sneak peek of a brand new stamp set that I have coming up March 4th, part of the Essentials by Ellen line. This set is called Wasabi and it features sushi. I absolutely love sushi. Uh, my mom and I took a trip for a whole month to Japan to visit my daughter and my granddaughter and I was so inspired the whole time I was there. And when I illustrated this set, I decided to create outline images and filler images. They're solid. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. It's a method often referred to as two-step stamping. I'm also going to be working with the Catherine Pooler Premium Dye Inks, and I just wanted to show you what the ink pad looks like. It's not a felt linen covered pad uh, like most dye inks are. This one is very foamy and spongy and the ink is very saturated so it's only going to take some very gentle love taps to ink up your image. And I'm going to grab some Nina Solar White 80 pound and load that into my Mini Misty here. And I've got my stamp already loaded on the lid and I'm going to go ahead and ink up and stamp and it only takes like I said a couple of gentle love taps. And then I'm just going to press down once and I've got a nice crisp clean impression and no feathering with this ink. So I'm going to rotate that piece of paper because I decided since I had all my supplies out I might as well make a couple cards all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp a second time and this is the beauty of using the Mini Misty and you're going to see that as I continue on with this project. So now I'm going to grab one of the solid fill images. This is the one that fills in the bowl of udon and I'm going to go ahead and get that mounted in place. As you can see, I've lined it up over the outline image. And then I'm going to grab some melon ice. And this is a wonderful chartreuse color. And again, just some gentle love taps. I'm not pressing very firmly at all. I'm not smashing the ink pad into the stamp. Very gentle. And one press uh, firmly on the lid and I've got a nice, crisp, clean impression all over of this ink and then I decided I wanted to add some shading and a great way to do that is to just take a darker ink color and ink up only a portion or one side of that image. So I carefully angled my ink pad so that I could get just part of that image inked up and press that over the top and I've got a nicely shaded image. I'm going to rotate this piece of paper and repeat the exact same process and that's the beauty of using the Misty and it's going to make it very easy to create multiples just by rotating that paper around and re-inking the image and stamping again and again and again. It's always going to be placed in the perfect spot every time. I've grabbed the little shrimp filler image here. Again, it's a solid. It's going to fill in the outline there. And I'm going to ink that up with Bellini, which is a really nice, soft, uh, kind of a peachy pink color. And I had to rotate my Misty as I was loading this image in because when I'm stamping, uh, you know, when I have that angled, you know, sideways, I can't really tell if I'm lining things up straight up and down the way they should be. So I had to rotate it and get it mounted and then I flipped it back over. So now I'm going to grab that Bellini color and go ahead and ink up. And then again, I wanted to have some shading. So I'm just going to grab a color called Polished, which is a deeper, richer tone uh, than the Bellini and just ink up the tail there of the shrimp. And then when I stamp that over the top, I'm going to have a nicely shaded shrimp. And it's hard to see it here in the video, but when you look at the card in you know close up, you can see that detail and it's really fun to have that effect. So again, I'm just going to rotate my paper and repeat that process to get a shrimp on my other bowl of udon. The images in this set are designed to be imperfect fillers, so they're not supposed to be spot on perfect when you stamp them. They're offset. So you're not going to be looking for absolute perfection. And that's one of the things I really, really love about this. It was also inspired by some retro illustration work I had seen where uh, they did this type of color fill on outline images, uh, old children's books and things like that. And so I just love the look. It's very retro and I think it's fun. So and I love the fact that I don't have to worry about being completely perfect. And I'm going to ink up that little egg yolk there with the tiara color. And you could just have easily done this with a little acrylic block. But since I just had my Misty out and I was going for it, so <laughs> I didn't want to grab anything else. And I'm going to do the exact same process with more images from the set. This one is the sake a decanter and the little cup. And just stamp the outline image in midnight. And then go ahead and grab the coordinating filler images for the cup and the decanter and line those up. Now this could be a sake decanter. It could be a soy sauce decanter. So it's up to you how you want to use it. That could be a little dipping bowl instead of a cup. So whatever you want. The Japanese are famous for their little bowls and 
beautiful ceramics and dishware and I love them and every meal that we had uh, when we dined out was just beautifully presented in the dinnerware and I wish I could have brought home like a truckload of that stuff because it's so pretty so now that I'm done stamping all my images I wanted to die cut them out so I've grabbed the coordinating dies get those lined up and then I'm gonna run over to my die cutting machine and run those through and then I toss them in a bowl that way I can sit them on my work surface and they don't get lost when I'm trying to build my card I also wanted to share with you this really fun wood paper product by Crafters Companion. It is self-adhesive backed wood. It's very, very thin. It is real wood and it reminds me of bamboo. So I used my tonic uh, bypass trimmer to cut a piece out that I wanted to use to create kind of like a table or a placemat or, or a tray, if you will, underneath uh, my focal images here. And I'm just kind of planning my layout a little bit more here. I've got a sentiment that's going to match and now I'm going to go ahead and get everything assembled. So with this uh, self-adhesive liner, I like to peel it back away a little bit and then I can go ahead and position it where I want on the card front without anchoring it down permanently. And once I have it in place, I'm just feeling the texture. I like to feel things. <laughs> so I'm always rubbing my fingers across and going, ooh, that's cool. And then once I have it in place, I can go ahead and press down firmly on the left hand side and then I'm going to reach underneath there and grab the rest of that liner paper and peel it away. And then I'm going to use tape burner to go ahead and mount the decanter jar there and I'm going to pop up the little cup with some of those thin 3D mounting squares. And the reason for that is I wanted to give it a little bit of pop up or ele elevation, but I don't want it to impede uh, the little action wobbler I'm going to be using on the bowl of udon. So get that in place and then I have these scrap strips. I don't know why I hang on to this crap. I have it over there in the bin and it just seems like whenever I need one a little strip of paper instead of cutting through another sheet of cardstock it's like oh I have all these scraps here and these little strips are perfect for that. So I grabbed the sentiment and I went ahead and used the midnight ink and stamped that right onto that strip. I'm going to mount some more of those thin foam mounting squares on the back and get that into place. Now these action wobblers come in two different sizes. I grabbed the mini ones for this project and I'm going to peel away the liner on the thicker portion of this wobbler. That's the part that gets mounted to your card front. And I'm just, it looked like I, my tweezers kind of grabbed the adhesive and started pulling it away. So I'm just putting it back in place there. And then get that mounted to the card front, peel away the liners of the thin part and then my focal image is going to get mounted to that. I like to do it that way. I guess you could do it the other way, but I just think they wobble better when you mount it uh, in this fashion. So I like to put the thin part um, on my focal image. So that's mounted in place. And I did want to mention, uh, as I finished off the card, I added some glossy accents there and coated the bowl and the decanter with the glossy accents to give it some really high gloss shine. And I also added some glitter glue and a drop of that Nouveau crystal drops in that pretty mustard yellow color to my egg yolk because I thought it was fun because it looks like a little enamel dot there. Just perfect. Now while that's drying, it's going to droop because that's 80 pound cardstock. So I grabbed a little acrylic block and just slid it underneath there to give it support so it wouldn't droop from the moisture there. And then when it was dry, it was perfect. And here you can see what happens when you activate that little wobbler by flicking it there with your finger. These are a lot of fun. It's hard to stop playing with them. <laughs> we have more still shots available over at the classroom blog. All the supplies that were featured on this project are listed down below in the description box. And you can also see them over at the classroom blog. We've got this release going live on March 4th. And I hope you're as excited as I am. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. You can see more Papercraft videos by clicking on the photos below. Thanks for watching.